Uh, hello everyone and welcome to another video. Uh, this time I'm going to talk about uh, Internet Direct uh, UDP client server components. Last time I covered the uh, TCP client server components where we demonstrated several examples uh, of some simple uh, uh, request response uh, application, uh, applications including chat and uh, this time we are going to cover UDP. Uh, so, uh, what is the difference between the TCP and UDP? I'm going to summarize just uh, some of the uh, differences. Uh, I found this nice comparison online and it says here uh, TCP keeps track of lost packets and makes sure that lost packets are resent uh, while UDP doesn't uh, keep track of lost packets. And that's uh, a problematic. So. Uh, when you send something using TCP, uh, those packets that were not sent or were lost will be resent, but UDP doesn't care. And uh, so you have a, a problem with UDP uh, when you send something, it doesn't necessarily mean it will arrive uh, to its destination. That's the first problem. So the second thing is that TCP adds sequence numbers to packets and reorders any packets that arrive in the wrong order while UDP doesn't care about packets arrival order and that is the second problem with UDP uh, because uh, for example if you use TCP and you send an integer and then a string uh, TCP will make sure that server will receive an uh, integer and then a string it cannot happen that he receives string and then integer okay so he will make sure that those packets uh, uh, arrive in the correct order but with UDP first you never know if those packets will even arrive and even if they do arrive you cannot be sure that they will uh, arrive in the correct order so uh, if you need to choose between TCP and UDP I will, def I will definitely recommend that you use TCP whenever possible but in some cases uh, for example when you have uh, speed or performance issues uh, you will want to use UDP it's uh, much faster because it's usually textual oriented protocol and uh, uh, like I said he doesn't use sequence sync he doesn't uh, use tracking of the lost packets and stuff therefore it's, it's logical that it's faster and it's logical that it requires less computer resources and these are some sample applications that uh, use UDP even today. Okay, so let's demonstrate uh, how to uh, create a simple UDP client server application and this is going to be a simple chat application. Uh, first we need to uh, have these UDP client server components and you can find them uh, by typing here UDP and you will find here T UDP, uh, TID UDP client and TID UDP server okay you place them uh, on your main form here okay uh, like with the case uh, like with the TCP uh, you, uh, you need to have uh, two uh, things first one is the IP address and the second one is port so a uh, client must know the IP address of the server and it must know the port where the server is listening okay uh, so the, the uh, IP address will be defined in this edit box in host uh, and port will be predefined in the object inspector, it's going to be this one. Uh, while server, he needs to uh, use that port as, a, as a preferably default port and you need to create a binding uh, that pretty much says I'm listening uh, to all networks uh, on this port. So. Uh, and set it to active, uh, meaning active is true. Then your UDP server will listen to incoming requests. And uh, well, let's run the application. And when I click send message, what happens is that a UDP client uh, sends that message to a UDP server. And once that message arrives to UDP server, it will uh, he will show it inside this uh, list box. Okay, so let's see how is it done. So when I click this send message, uh, UDP client uh, uses this send buffer uh, method and send buffer says, okay, uh, I'm sending it where? To, I'm sending it to, to, the, to this IP address and to this port. Why do I need to specify uh, IP address and the port? Because uh, unlike uh, TCP, uh, UDP is a connectionless protocol, meaning there is no prior connection uh, and therefore you always need to specify where do you send uh, the data okay 
So, uh, so in this case, I'm sending it to this uh, IP address and to this port. And whatever I'm sending, and in this case, I'm sending some message. Uh, this e message is nothing but uh, this edit uh, uh, field, edit component. And uh, whatever I'm sending, I need to uh, convert it to bytes. So send buffer sends a set of bytes to the server. And uh, that's it. So this is what a client does. It's, it uses send buffer to send a set of bytes, meaning the text message inside the e message component to this IP address and to this port. So the client sent the message and now let's see what happens on the server side. Uh, the server side uses the on UDP read uh, event. Uh, it is triggered every time uh, when something arrives to the UDP server. And if we uh, open the code, what we see here, uh, well, uh, if we see the client, he sent uh, a message but converted it to bytes. So it is uh, a reverse uh, on, on the server side. A server received bytes in this A data. Uh, parameter and then converted those bytes to string in order to add that string or a message uh, to the list of one. And as you can see, um, I updated uh, the GUI here, meaning the user interface, and I didn't use synchronize because uh, UDP, uh, this method on UDP read uh, event is uh, triggered in the context of the main thread. Uh, but you can also, you have here the properties and you have this uh, threaded event. By default, it's false, meaning uh, every request, uh, like I said, is uh, handled in the context of the main thread. But if you use a uh, threaded event and you set it to true, then it's recommended that you uh, synchronize this uh, operation here to be thread safe. Okay, but like I said, in our case, it, it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, uh, so uh, Let's, let's just repeat. UDP uh, sent the message using the uh, send buffer. We specified the IP address and the port because uh, UDP is a connections protocol and we sent a set of bytes. Uh, th those set of bytes arrived to the server and is uh, located in this A data parameter. And then we convert uh, that bytes back to string and save it inside this message and add that message to this box. And that's how it's done. But what UDP uh, does uh, have and TCP does not have is the broadcast method. So what is broadcast? Broadcast is a situation where you want to send some packets uh, to the entire network. Uh, TCP uh, you cannot do that directly because TCP is a connection pro protocol, meaning he would need to be connected uh, to everyone at the same time. That's uh, simply not possible. So uh, he will need to connect one by one and uh, doesn't necessarily mean he can even connect to uh, everyone. Uh, so that's a problem for, T for uh, TCP. But for UDP, that's not a problem because he doesn't connect to any client. He just uh, throws the packets in, in that direction. And we only hope that uh, the other side will uh, catch that packet. Okay, so broadcast is nothing but uh, this, uh, throwing that packets in, in all directions, meaning you know, to all clients in, in uh, to all uh, servers in, in that uh, network. So when I click uh, here, broadcast message, uh, I simply say, I, I simply call the broadcast method. So what am I broadcasting? This is the text that I'm broadcasting. Uh, where? To this port. So I don't specify the IP address like in this case because broadcast. Uh, simply means sent to everyone, not to some specific IP address. Okay, but uh, so when I click send message, I uh, have sent message to this uh, to the server at this IP address. But when I say broadcast message, I have sent this message to everyone in this network, and uh, uh, our, our local server uh, fetched that message. He caught it and he displayed it. Okay. But there is also one other way to uh, do a broadcast, not just by using the uh, broadcast method. So we use the broadcast method here. Uh, we can also uh, broadcast using the send buffer. Uh, how? By using the broadcast IP address. That's the last address in the network. So we can say uh, send message and access is denied. So why the access is denied? So let's see, client uh, broadcast enable uh, 
is not checked. So we'll check this option here, meaning that our UDP client can broadcast, meaning he can send that message to everyone in the network at, at once. And I run again and uh, send using the send buffer only to this host, broadcast to everyone using the uh, broadcast method. And now we are going to use uh, we are going to do a broadcast using the send buffer, but we are going to use the broadcast IP address. Send message, and now it works. Okay, so we have enabled the broadcast, and that is the UDP. Uh, it's not anything complicated, but still, like I said, it's uh, if you if you need to choose between TCP and UDP, I would definitely recommend TCP because it's, it's reliable, uh, but if you have performance issues and you have uh, situations that, like where you transfer video or, or sound, uh, where, you, where some losses are acceptable because, uh, because you need some faster transfer, uh, then you would use UDP. Uh, so it, it's really up to you and, and uh, the concrete situation that you are in. Uh, thank you for watching and well, see you next time.